this guy is capable. So it's not a situation where it's just like you're up against somebody that's just always going to have a king here that's incapable of bluffing. No, it's, it's definitely the opposite of that. But the question, though, is, is that match stack at the lodge yeah so uh the straddle's on in this hand uh it's a 10 and then there's two under two under the gun limps and a uh, villain in a button over limps so now it's and really it's really two five ten two five ten right uh two, five. so two limps you said two limps yeah two under the gun limps and then villain over limps in the button um and we're in the big blind with ace queen off suit so it's kind of the middle blind right ace queen off how deep are you What's the effective stack? Uh, effective stack is the villain in the button with 2,500. I have about 4K. Okay, so you have him covered. So two limps, villain one, button limps. You're in the big blind, which is the middle with ace queen. I'm assuming you raise here? Yeah, I bump it up to $80. I think I could have actually gone a bit larger, but uh, I mean, I think the villain on the button is basically calling. Yes, the villain on the button is definitely one of the wider guys that was on the, the live stream. So you make it 80. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the two limpers and the straddle fold and uh, villain on the button calls. So you're just heads up. Yeah. Button calls. Uh, so pots maybe what, 200, something like that? Yeah, yeah, I have 190, but yeah. Okay. 100 is close. Enough. Okay. Okay, so flop is... Ace, queen, 10, rainbow. So you've got top two. Yeah, I got top two. By the way, this particular villain that's on the button is actually about to play, I believe, in the TCH live game, which is going to start here in a minute, so people will know. Um, but he's very wide. It's interesting that you had said, like, in the email that I could see him being feared, sort of, at the lower stakes, because I'm not saying that 2-5 is lower stakes for Texas, but... Uh, especially if he plays one, three, because I, I think maybe a lot of guys might be playing a little bit scared money and, you know, see this guy play a lot of hands and, you know, willing to make big bluffs, uh, things like that. So I think you had said that in the email, right? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, his, my perception of him is that, you know, he's like a lag player. He's looking to put his opponents in tough spots. You know, he's constantly floating light, um, mm -hmm. just, you know, and he's looking to gamble basically. That, that's I would say that that's true. And again, like I maximized off of him in a five. He he uh, after the stream, a guy had opened on the button, and I three bet aces out of the small blind, and he four bet me in the big blind, and I five bet him with aces, and he called, and I got about three half pot size streets with aces on queen six six five seven run out, which I'll cover I think briefly on my podcast tomorrow. So that was a that just made my night. Obviously, I mean, it was two thousand. Going to the flop. I actually, I bet 550, 1200, and then maybe 2100. Um, but okay, so you've got top two here, right? Ace, queen, 10, rainbow. Okay. But he's yeah, going to have so, all the king jacks here for sure. All the king jacks. I Maybe. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. I think, you know, Without he was. A doubt. Without maybe. A doubt. Yeah. 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 Okay. So uh, I bet out 100, uh, just feeling that I have a range advantage. I think I could have maybe gone a bit bigger to two thirds but I bet about a half pot. Yeah, I mean, this. I mean, I don't want to go too down the road about... Let's just say that if I was playing against a guy that is a very sort of loose and likes to make light calls post, um, I might bet larger here for the... I mean, obviously, you're blocking a fair amount of, you know, very good hands, right? And with, you know, the, the ace and the queen. And he's, all, he's going to be obviously raising aces, queens, and tens. And ace, queen, too. Um, but... I think with, with this particular villain and also to like the style that might play here is that if he's got like a hand like Jack 10, Queen 10, King 10, any pair plus gutter here, the pair plus gutter being, you know, King or Jack X plus the pair, I think is going to call. So I could actually see sizing larger than this, maybe to 150, but okay. So you bet 100. Yeah. Uh, yep. And uh, villain calls. Okay. So pot's just a hair under 400. Okay, let's move to the turn. Uh, turn is the jack. I don't remember the suit, but it didn't bring in a backdoor flush draw. Oh, that's an awful card for you. Yeah. Well, again, this is an interesting one, too. So is there a backdoor flush draw, or you said it, you don't remember? No, no. No, no backdoor. Okay, so total rainbow. It's yeah. interesting how all these calls are dealing with this whole Fifth Street chicken concept here on the turn. Uh, a lot of our calls here today... 
I mean, the way that I would look at this one is, is that that's most likely either going to make him a straight or two pair. So if it makes him a straight or two pair, um, I don't think that he's just floating with like five, six. I mean, you race out of the blind, right? He's not dumb. So that I, I haven't seen that part of his game. You know what I'm saying? Like you raised against like a bunch of limps. Like you, when you bet the flop, you're going to have something. He's not floating with pocket sixes or seven. So, you know, his range on the flop is going to be pair plus straight draw or he flopped it anyways. Um, so the pull pair plus straight draw thing here on the turn, the jack is he's either going to have a king for straight or he has some sort of two pair like jack 10 or queen jack, right? Um, so what I would most likely do here is check call the turn with some equity and then basically check evaluate at the end, you know, and a lot of the two pairs, I'm sort of thinking ahead, like chess here, two streets ahead. A lot of those like queen, jack, jack tens are just going to check back at the end. So you check call here on the turn. And then if he, if he does bet, and then, you know, you sort of hope it goes check, check, uh, basically, you know, at the end in this particular distribution here on the board, if you check call turn, if he does bet, and then the river you fill up, with this guy and maybe with some others that play a similar style, I would actually bet the river because I think that he'll call off and he'll do a lot more checking behind. Sorry, I'm, I'm getting ahead. Of, I'm thinking two streets ahead. So ace, queen, 10, uh, you bet 100 into 200. He calls, turns a jack. I'm assuming that you checked here. Yeah, so I check here. Um, and then Dylan takes an interesting sizing. So he bets 300. So just... Uh... That is an interesting sizing because now that's more of that's more of this isn't going to be a whole lot of two pair. Uh, and actually, too, like with two pair, now that I think of it, I mean, he might be just doing a fair amount of check back and checking back anyways here. Um, I don't know if he ever really takes two pair here with that sizing. I mean, you're definitely supposed to have hands here to call with. Um, obviously, you'd rather have like a set of aces because it gives you more out. But I think I would continue here. Yeah, I feel kind of like I'm at the top of my range. You know, I can have worse hands. I can fold like worse aces without two pair. And uh, I'm just feeling like I kind of have to call. So I, I do call. Right. So now the pot's just a hair under a thousand. Hero calls uh, button bets 300. Hero calls. So just about a thousand, some people in the live chat saying, well, doesn't he raise? Yeah, he would probably raise King Jack suited, but King Jack off, I think, fits into this very, very well. Um, yeah. For like a limp, an over limp call. I mean, I think he has like King five suited. I think he has King six suited. I yeah. think he has all the yeah, kings. Yeah, suited Kings um, too. He yeah. has some off suit Kings, like King eight off, uh, maybe King seven off. I'm not exactly that's, sure. That's pretty wide. <laughs> That's pretty the wide. <laughs> Actually, the backstory is that Matt Matt H. I don't know if you know him. Was sitting at the table. Is that Westlake Matt? Was he wearing no, a mask? No, that's Matt. C, oh, I think. okay. Matt okay. H. Matt H uh, played on the TCH live stream, and they got into a huge pot where Boots folded bottom boat uh, just before. Actually, Matt H. Took a super strong line check raising huge on the river. So I think that might have played into him being a little bit tilted. I don't just know from why, that why, why. Why am I not thinking who Matt H. Is? That's interesting. I don't know off the top of my head. Uh, okay. So the pot's, excuse me, the pot's just under a thousand. Okay. Yep. Yeah. So the river is just a blank. It's like a three or, off something. Of whatever it yeah. takes or something. Okay. Uh, so I check uh -huh. and, uh, so then villain sort of tanks a little bit. Um, he starts counting out his stack. He takes about a little bit over a minute kind of counting out chips. He puts out a thousand and then slowly starts adding on chips and then puts out a bet of 1500. Well, <laughs> I think you're Ari. I think you're a new subscriber to CLP, right? Or did you just subscribe? I've actually, I've actually been a subscriber for over two years. Oh, okay. So there's a hand that I'm going to go over. <clears throat> there's a hand that I'm going to go over against this villain that was after the Lodge live stream that was somewhat inconsequential to everybody else that was at the table. And I had ace high, and he had bet 2000 into a $1,000 pot on a I think it was a six, five, four, six queen board. And uh, I was a little bit tilted about the night and I didn't think about it as much as I should have uh, thought about for a second calling with ace three for ace high on six, five, four, six queen, and then just folded and he just had total air. But again, that's a very villain specific thing. My point is, is that I, I don't want to get into specifically this guy is capable 
So it's not a situation where it's just like you're up against somebody that's just always going to have a king here that's incapable of bluffing. No, it's it's definitely the opposite of that. But the question, though, is is that what is he bluffing with um, and what calls on the flop and what is he – is he turning like 9-10 into a bluff here? It's possible. It's possible. And, you know, would he take this type of – sort of 300 on turn, 1500 at the end. Um, yes, you're supposed to have some hands to call. In general, if I saw this on paper in a regular live game, I would just say just fold, fold, fold all day. Let's just sort of say that this guy is like a lag that's capable. Uh, I, I still kind of want to fold here to 1500 when you look at sort of MDF um, in the sense of, or just pot odds. I mean, you're getting what, like... 2500 for 1500 so you're getting more than one and a half to one probably like you need about need to be good here what maybe like 38 percent of the time um but it's interesting though with the texture of the flop it's just like what does he have here that's a bluff obviously he's going to have to be some pair right yeah i mean i think so um well he has to have a pair right uh, you could have some suited connectors, backdoor flush draw. I mean, so you could have like five, seven of whatever oh, suit. Man, and he's going to call the flop with ace, queen, 10. I mean, that's really, really, really wide. I mean, if you think he has that many hands, then maybe you get on board with a call. I just, I, 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 don't, I don't know. I, don't know. I, I think I still might fold here, to be honest with you. Yeah, I, I ended up sort of debating it and realizing that I have almost all my sets, including pocket jacks, because I'm probably just range betting on this flop. Mm -hmm. Um, and so, you know, MDF is 40%. I have to call it the top 40% of my range. Um, so I just feel like I can even have some Kings. Uh, I don't know how many keep betting the turn, but I, I can even have some of my Kings that check to protect my checking range. So I feel like ace queen is just maybe borderline, but just a little bit too far down. So I ended up folding. That's interesting. So in this particular spot, I think the MDF and the pot odds are the same, right? Almost. Um, because... He's betting, right? So he's he's betting over the size of the pot, right? You are correct in saying that you only need to call with forty percent, right? It's pot and a half, and then for pot odds, it's twenty five hundred, fifteen hundred for you to call, almost the same. It's almost very close, right? Because you're getting you're getting slightly over one point five to one, but that's an interesting intersection between MDF and pot odds, right? At one point five x. Yeah, that's an that's a good point. Yeah, yeah. So, um. So you did fold. Yeah, I did fold. Just waiting for a better spot. You know. Well, I mean, did you did he ever show what he what he had? Because a lot of times, like to, he showed that bluff to me. No, he didn't. Well, that would probably make I, me feel a little bit better. I think the, the history between us is that we have no history, so he just assumes that I'm like a regular two five player because he's never seen me before. I don't right, but do. don't you think that that would lend him to showing the bluff? Maybe, maybe, but I, I do think that um, he's also probably going to think that I'm more scared money because I'm sitting on 4K, maybe thinks that I doubled up and I'm sort of protecting my stack, just trying to take a win. So, so you think he might want to uh, not show you to continue to be scared money, you mean? Oh, no, I'm just saying I think he might just be a little <clears throat> bit more like bluff heavy. I don't, at least when he takes a big sizing where it looks like I can't call, you know? Like yeah, I, I don't have a big issue here with this fold. Um it's interesting because you're you're supposed you know maybe once in a while you're gonna have to have some kings that you play this way too, which is fine. If you had ace king here, you could check the turn and play it like as a as a check call game. I would just take one one final thing here, is that I you know you said I want to look for a better spot, so I'm gonna be doing a uh, I'm gonna put it up on YouTube. It might come out in the next day or two. As card dead as I was on the on the lodge live stream. There is one interesting hand that I played, and that was the Jack Ten of Hearts four bet hand. If people uh, where um, I four bet Mariano on the button with Jack Ten of Hearts, and the initial opener who was Trey called and Mariano called, and the board came out Jack Eight Five with two diamonds. I had Jack Ten of Hearts. It got checked to me, and I bet just maybe about thirty-five to forty percent of the pot. And Trey, who usually doesn't put in money, he's a rec player, but he usually doesn't put in a bunch of money unless he's got something you know fairly big. He raised me to twenty six hundred, and he had forty seven hundred behind. And Mario thought for a while and then folded. So I'm sitting here with Jack ten on Jack eight five, 
And um, I wish I had that one back. I think it's a very, very close spot, and I will break it down on the combos and stuff like that. But it's you shouldn't be playing, and I'm not saying that you, you said this, but you shouldn't be playing in a game where that the money is going to influence your decision. Now, with that being said, we're not robots, and I know that it can, especially if you're in a really good game and you're shot-taking, and maybe you only have like one buy-in for the game in that night where you're like, well, I don't want to take something that's very, very close. And then if I'm wrong and I lose, I can't play in the game anymore. Right. Um, which is kind of annoying for me, although the lodge is going to do a thing where they're going to have boxes, because like I said, oh, the TCH has boxes, you know, what am, am I supposed to bring 30,000 in cash to play for three or four hours? So sometimes I've been getting in a lot of some of these spots. Now I had access to some money, if I had gone with that hand against Trey and lost, but you can see if you're playing like in a two, five game on a live stream for three hours and you bring 15 grand with you and you get into a big pot. And then if you lose it and then you can't play, that could play, can't play the rest of the live stream. And it's a good game that could sort of somewhat influence your decision. But in general, as a theory, we don't want the money to be an influence or like, Oh, I can think of a better. I think you might've said, Oh, I can pick a better spot. Um, unless it's re unless you've got a mental game thing where you think it's going to really affect you and then you're going to play bad the, the rest of the session. Yeah, exactly. Like you said, I have like one extra buy-in that I brought with me. If mm -hmm. I lose that, I might get tilted. I feel like it's a close spot. Maybe he has over bluffing a little bit and I'm losing something by not calling mm -hmm. just that was my read in the moment. Yeah. But I was like, well, if I lose this pot, then it's going to ruin my night and this game's good. So, yeah, I mean, I can get on board with that. I, I, I actually think that Again, not to be results oriented. I lean towards fold. I think the fact that he didn't show you and you're telling me all that stuff, I interpret that is that it he probably did have a king. Uh, I think that more. I think a lot, a high percentage of the time, more than fifty percent of the time, if he was bluffing, he was going to show you. <laughs> so he and he did show me the hand that he bluffed against me. So, uh, anyways, uh, no, that's an interesting one. Thanks for the call. I appreciate it.